Hi and welcome to this video. Um, this is going to be a special video, it's going to be the first one of a whole series of videos. Um, actually this video has been requested a couple of times, multiple times, uh, as well on YouTube as well as on Instagram. Uh, people have been asking me to make a tutorial series or make tutorials about keeping leaf cutter ants. And so far I was quite hesitant to do so because uh, I never considered myself an expert. Uh, I kept leaf cut ants now for a little over a year, so I cannot claim that I'm an expert with years of experience in keeping leaf cut ants. Um, and I made a lot of mistakes during this time. Uh, here's my colony, as you can see, and they're outside here as well, drinking sugar water, cutting leaves. And uh, this colony, as I said before, is a little bit over than a year old. And um, but recently, when I when I got all these requests, I thought about it, and I thought maybe just you know because I made so many mistakes, um, mistakes that could have been avoided if I knew, if I would have known what I know now. Um, I thought, yeah, maybe that that is the reason why I could make a tutorial so other people can avoid those mistakes. Um, when I started with ke keeping leaf cutter ants, I, I read a lot of tutorials, I read a lot of stuff about them, I did a lot of research, I looked at a lot of videos and still I made a lot of mistakes. So uh, the, the thing, the problem a little bit I think is that there is very little material out there, uh, very little material that is complete, that, that has everything in it, that talks about, you know, goes more in depth and that's what I try to do here with this tutorial series about keeping leaf cutter ants. Now what I have to say in advance uh, is that I keep Atlas Extends, so I, um, I don't have experience with Acromyrmex uh, leaf cutter ants. Um, they probably are not too different to keep, but uh, if you have Atta, um, I think a lot of things I can tell you, even if it's a different Atta species, for, for example Atta cephalotis or something like that, uh, they have a lot of similarities. There might be small differences, but uh, my experience are uh, from keeping Atlas Extends, so keep that in mind. Anyway, um, let's get started. I think what you have to keep in mind, or something that I really want to say in a, uh, before we, we get started or go in depth, is um, you know, keeping ants, keeping Atta, keeping le or leaf cutter ants in general actually is a is a job with two two sides. Actually, you're an ant keeper on one side, so you have to know how to keep ants, how to look for your ants. And on the other side, you're a fungus keeper because that's uh, a very big part of keeping leafcutter ants is keeping the fungus alive. Actually, it's the more difficult part. I think that's the fungus, as you can see here. Um, keeping this part alive, keeping the fungus alive is more difficult than keeping the ants alive. So uh, that's the two sides of keeping leafcutter ants. And what I really recommend, if you want to get into keeping leafcutter ants, start with other ants first. Make sure you have the part of keeping ants covered, you know, you have experience with keeping ants because you will have to focus a lot of, of keeping the, the fungus alive. And if you at the same time I still have to learn how to keep the ants or how, you know, get your experience with keeping ants, it's going to be even more difficult. Um, uh, I had, when I started keeping leafcutter ants, I already had experience in keeping ants, uh, local species and other different kinds of ants. And that was, that was very important because uh, even though I had quite a few experiences uh, with keeping ants, I still felt like a rookie when it came to leafcutter ants. And uh, if you haven't made any experience with keeping ants, uh, it's going to be twice as difficult, I think. So start with another species if you have never kept ants before. But if you have some experience with keeping ants, then I think uh, this tutorial might help you. All right. Uh, it's it's going to be multiple videos, I cannot do it all in one video and uh, I st I'm still learning so there might be more videos in the future uh, that covers things that I cannot cover in this first series. But today I want to talk about the setup, um, that's the start, I'm going to start with the setup. I will talk later on about uh, uh, other things like, like food, what, what do you feed them, what do you offer them, what kind of plants, what do you have to look for and also keeping the fungus life and so on. But today I just want to talk about the setup because it's the start, you need to, to have a setup at the beginning and if the setup is good, uh, many other things will be much easier. So as you can see I have quite a large setup here and uh, that's quite an unusual setup. 
um, you don't have to start with something like that, you know. Uh, the first thing, the first thing to start usually is a, is a setup with three containers. That's what most people start with, and that's what I recommend also to start with, especially if you have a small colony. Uh, if you bought a small colony or even start with a queen, uh, the 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 best way to start is having three containers with three different purposes. And uh, there are there is one container for garbage for store uh, for the garbage, you know, where the ants can store their garbage. There is one container where you where is there where they can harvest leaves, so where you can offer them the leaves, and one container uh, where the fungus will be. And um, the the first two containers are quite easy to do. Uh, the garbage container just make sure it, it is dry, it has a low humidity, and then they will use this garbage container. If they don't use it immediately as garbage container, just Make sure you take the garbage wherever they post them, put it into the garbage container and as soon as the smell of garbage uh, is there and the, it is a dry environment, uh, they will use it as a garbage container. That's very easy to do. Um, the second one, the container where you keep the leaves, uh, I would suggest that you put in some sort of substrate in there. Um, I usually use the, uh, ceramics, those uh, little pellets. Um, some substrate that can, that can store some moisture so you can uh, actually have a little bit of higher humidity in the in that container that has two reasons first of all uh, they can the ants can use this substrate also for 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 building you know they can carry it into the fungus chamber and use it if they need to and the other thing is uh, the yes for the for your plants if you put your plants in there and if it's very very dry in there and not humid that the plants will dry out really quickly and uh, that's something you don't want. So uh, it's good to have some sort of humidity in the in the container that you intend to use as as feeding container, right? Uh, also, uh, it also helps to prevent that they use it as, as garbage storage. If it's if there's humidity in there, um, they probably try to avoid putting garbage in there. Don't make it too high though, so they don't mistake it for a fungus chamber. Just make sure it's always a little bit moisture in there and humidity. So now the more difficult part is actually the fungus chamber. That's probably the key. That's the heart of your of your ant colony, and it's also um, the chamber where, where yeah, it, it is worth to do to have a good fungus chamber. It's worth to work on it a little um, because if if your fungus chamber is bad, badly designed, it will be very difficult. Everything will be very difficult. And I actually have, you know, if I go here, I do have one fungus chamber here ready that I just set up recently. So there's no fungus inside there yet, but I can show you all the features, um, all the things that are, that I believe are important. Um, first of all, the boxes, I get asked a lot about those boxes, where I got them. Um, <laughs> that's actually from a, from a store where they sell kitchen supplies. Uh, those boxes are not meant for ants originally or intended for ants. There are food storage boxes, but a lot of different ways of boxes work. Um, yeah, <laughs> you, you will find stuff if you look if you're looking for it. And um, what I believe, you know, things that are important. First of all, I would if if you have a free container setup, I would place the the fungus chamber in the middle. Uh, that makes things easier. Um, and as you can see here, you know, I have, for example, this is a garbage chamber and it has an opening here. Um, so there is airflow in there because I don't want humidity too high in the garbage chamber. But as you can see, the, the fungus chamber is actually closed. There's, a, uh, there's no opening here. And there is a little airflow coming through the tubes. And I think and that's important. You need some airflow, but not too much. Otherwise, it would be impossible to keep the necessary humidity in there. Um, so uh, there might be a possibility to have a very little uh, opening with uh, with a, like a mesh or something on it. But uh, if you have if you have the tubes, you should be actually enough. You know, um, the tubes shouldn't be too wide, otherwise they will put place fungus in there. But it shouldn't be too narrow as well because uh, they still need to be able to carry uh, leaves through it. Uh, I think those tubes are like three centimeters or something like that in, uh, in diameter. And um, yes, uh, there are a couple of things to uh, think about it. First of all, um, what I really recommend is put, to put in something, 
put in plaster in there. You know, as you can see, it looks there's substrate on top, but on the on the bottom there's plaster, and there's a reason for that. Um, you need to have possibility to keep humidity high in, inside this container, so you need something that can store moisture. And if you just put substrate in there, a lot of people just put substrate in there, and that's what I did at the beginning as well. Um, the thing is, the ants will carry substrate out. Uh, they like to dig around their fungus, um, so uh, usually they carry the substrate out, and if you have no substrate in there anymore, um, it will be very difficult to keep a constant humidity in there. So you need something that is that is fixed. So I, what I put in there is, is as a plaster of Paris, and, uh, and it's just fixed. The ants can carry it out because it's it's like stone, right? But it can still store humidity. Uh, it can still store moisture, and therefore uh, ensure that the humidity levels are constant in there. You know, um, I think that's very important. On top here, I have ceramics. Uh, I actually put the ceramics on there when when the plaster was still wet. You know, so the ceramics are actually fixed on the plaster. So they cannot carry it out that easily. And uh, the reason why I put in ceramics is, first of all, it looks better than just having plaster in there. Second of all, um, it gives some structure to the ground, so uh, where the fungus will be. So, um, for example, if you put too much water in there once uh, and the plaster cannot hold it, um, since there's a structure, you know, the water will be between those ceramics things and will not directly touch the, the fungus. This is very important. I will talk about it later. The fungus should never touch, come coming direct contact with water. So uh, this helps. And also the ceramics, I use the ceramics uh, substrate and the good thing about them is they change color if they're dry. Uh, they are, they, um, therefore I can always always see if it's nice and moist in there or if it's, uh, if it's too dry. Um, so that's a, another advantage, but you don't really need it. You can also just you know, on the other, on the original fungus chamber, I didn't do that, as you can see here. There's just plaster out there on the ground. It doesn't look that nice, and uh, but it, it still works. It, but I think it's very important to have something that, that, is, that is fixed in there and that can store moisture. Otherwise, you will have a lot of troubles. I didn't do that at the beginning, and I always had troubles to keep a constant uh, humidity level inside the fungus chamber without the plaster. So that's something I would recommend. And uh, another thing is that I didn't do at the beginning and I really regretted it later on. And uh, as you can see it here is now. It, you, I think it's very important that you have an easy way, you know, to put water inside your system. Uh, that is not, um, it's just, it has to be easy. It, it doesn't matter how you make it or how you create it. What I did here is, you know, I have a little hole in here and put a tube in there and the tube goes directly into the plaster as you can see behind there, and um, it's fixed inside the plaster, so the ants cannot uh, use the tube to escape. But uh, it's very easy, I can just put in some water here, and it will go directly into the plaster. And something like that, I, I think it's very, very important that you have something like that, because uh, you, you will need to help, especially when, when there's not much fungus in there at the beginning, you will need to help, to help the ants to keep the moisture up, and you need to make sure that the plaster is always, uh, at the, to keep the humidity up and you have to make sure the plaster is always moist. So um, if it, if it, the thing is, if you have to open the, the container in order to put water in, that is, it is always a very bad thing because every time you open it, the, the micro, microclimate that is in there, you know, the humidity and everything will just be, be gone, you know, and um, that's really bad. Actually, I really recommend once there's fungus in there, never to open it if it's not absolutely necessary. So the ants can actually work and 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 help regulate the microclimate uh, in there, and uh, you don't disturb it by opening it. So if you have to put water in and open the container, that's that's not not ideal. So if you have an easy way to put uh, more, uh, water in there without having to disturb the whole system, um, that that's very convenient and makes things much easier. That's why I really recommend that when you start or set something up, that you make something like this a possibility to uh, to put in uh, water. So I think that's the most important things about the setup. If you have those three containers ready, um, if you have a container for garbage for the fungus and for feeding them, I think you should be ready to go. And one more thing I think is important or should, you should try to remember, if you build your setup, make sure it's, uh, you have the possibility to enlarge the setup, to add modules or 
you know, make it larger, add boxes, add containers, whatever, however you want to do it. But just keep in mind the leafcutter ant colonies, they can grow really quickly and uh, you want to be able to um, to enlarge their territories without having to disturb them too much. So make sure you're, uh, when you build your setup that you already think about, you know, how you're going to add uh, territories or how you're going to add containers or uh, um, just make sure it's modular. Uh, you have a possibility to, to uh, adjust the size, you know, depending on the, on the growth of the colony. And yeah, I will talk more about how to keep them, how to keep the fungus alive, how to keep your ants alive uh, in the next few videos. And um, yeah, one thing that I really recommend, you know, is uh, using the commentary section. I really will answer questions about keeping ants, uh, about keeping uh, leafcutter ants in, in particular. And I will always, uh, I try always to answer the, the comments. So uh, just write a comment if you have a question. Really use the comment section. Uh, it's not being used too much on this channel so far. But especially for tutorials, I believe it's very important. And I will also answer the questions that have been asked maybe a year or even more, even later after I made this video. So if you want to get into leaf, uh, keeping leaf cutter ends and uh, have questions, use the comment section. And yeah, um, the next video will come soon. And if you want to see it and don't miss it, uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will get notifications. Uh, thank you very much and see you on the next video.